I guess we're recording then, aren't we? In today's video, we are going to completely dismantle the R1250 GSA. Have I got dirt on my nose? Bloody hell, haven't I? Oh, wrong side. That's better. Should we on? On? Sorry, on? Or off? <laughs> on or off? I think we should go on. I think we should go on. So, in today's video, I'm going to show you exactly how to take every single panel off. Now, I've done this in other videos in the past, but today we're just going to keep this as a reference. So when people are asking me how to take their bikes apart, I can just ping over a link to, to this video and you'll see me chatting to you right now. All right? So you're at home, you're contemplating whether you're gonna take your bike apart and fit that Denali bundle on all by yourself or that N of K2 all by yourself, but you're terrified because you don't know which screws to undo. And then once you've undone them, you start realizing that there's different sizes. Some have got shoulders, some haven't got shoulders. Some have got big shoulders, some have got short shoulders. How am I ever gonna remember where everything goes? Well, this video, I'm gonna show you exactly that. Now, the best thing to do is make a note. In previous videos, I've, I've said, draw a great big diagram on a, on a back of a cardboard box. And as you take each screw out, punch that screw right into the cardboard, exactly where you took it out of the, the bike. Obviously, if you're not much of a Rolf Harris, <laughs> then this isn't your, this, this probably isn't the right thing for you to do. If you have got an R1200 GSA, then ignore this video, ignore this video. They're very similar bikes, I know, but the, the screws are completely different on, on the various panels. If you've got an R1250 GSA, the bolts and the screws are gonna be exactly as I'm showing you here. So if you get lost, you can just come back to this video and fast forward, just scrub, scrub through on the video and find the bit where I'm holding the screw up based on where that screw goes and you'll know exactly what screw that I'm fitting. Okay, right, so let's get started. Oh, and also because obviously this is uh, me making a video for your convenience, because you need this video based on finding the right screws to go in the right hole, well then at least let me just play at least one advert, yeah? And when the advert pops up, don't skip it. If you, Obviously it's your prerogative if you want to skip it, but if you don't skip it, I get a couple of pennies. It all adds up at the end of the month. But the other thing is, if you just come to this video because you have searched for how do I take my bike apart and how do I put it back together again, that kind of thing, well then, did you know that I sell Denali stuff? And I sell in of K2s. And oh, there's some other stuff I'm doing as well, but I don't want to talk about that just yet. Okay, so I've actually already dismantled the back of the bike. And then I thought to myself, let's make this video. So I apologize, I'm not gonna put it back together get again and then undo each screw for you. What I've done is uh, I've just rested it back on here like this. When you take the seats off your bike, you'll see one, two, three, four bolts holding down the grab rail. And the, the front two bolts are obviously identical. Now these ones, you can just slot straight back into here. And the, the two rear ones are slightly shorter. So if I can compare these two, so you can see with these that the front one is shorter than the rear and just pop those back into the holes. The Torx size for those is 40. So that's a, T, a T40 for all of the bolts holding on the grab rail, the pannier holder, which I call the Zimmer frame and the top tray, everything is T40. So the longer bolts, go at the front and the short ones go at the back. Just, just leave them inside the, the grab rail. So for the Zimmer frame, the pannier holders, it's one, two, three, four, five, and then the corresponding side, six. And the bolts that come out of here, what you have are these three bolts each side. Now this bolt here, as you can see, they are, that's actually the same size as the one at the back. But that bolt comes out all by itself. And that is, that's the one that goes in the side. At the front, you've got this bolt here. And in the back, you've got this bolt here. This little spacer, this bush spacer just here, this sits just up here at the back. So that goes in before the grab rail goes on, right? And you have one each side. 
but as you undo them you'll see that just so in case you want to come back to reference this video you can see that the the longer one goes in the front the short one goes in the back and the one without anything with it goes in the side and then it's the same the other side don't forget the two brushes which go a slot in at the back just there before the grab rail goes goes in so then once all those six bolts are off we then carefully pull the zimmer frame away without scratching your exhaust okay and, and when it's like that this will just lift completely off now you've got these plastic covers here so take these out you can't get these on the wrong way around they're all polarized on the back so if you try and get the one from this side in here it looks like it'll go but it won't it's not quite fitting so they, they they literally go in the right space if you so it can't go in that one at all so you can't really get that wrong so i'd say take these out because depending on where you're going to store this whilst you're working on the bike it um you might lose them they might fall out and lose them only because i've lost them myself in the, well, i haven't actually lost them but they've fallen out then and then what we do is we pull this off like so now if you've had a data tool tracker or anything fitted to the bike it'll be fitted under here you just need to maybe warm it up and, and slowly prise that off and so this this customer's got a scorpion tracker so i've just taken it off and left that resting on top of the alarm at the back of the bike right so now we've done that at the back we're now going to lift the front of the bike up and i'm going to get underneath here and undo the necessary screws here so now we're at this stage, we're just going to take off the front nose. It's two screws holding on the front nose. So both these two screws are short shouldered Torx 25 screws. The next screw we're going, we're going to undo whilst we got the front of the bike up or you're on your knees, if you haven't got a sky lift, is this screw just here. And this connects the, the front and the front right and left side of the beak together. That is also a short shouldered T25. The next screw we're going to undo is this one just here. Not this one, this one, slightly set back. And this one also is a short shouldered screw, T25. And we're gonna do the same on the, exactly the same on the other side. just inside i don't know what you call these the radiate the, the panels that cover the radiators so you've got two screws you've got one up top and one down the bottom so there you go both short shouldered screws t25s on there as well and the same on the other side What we're gonna do now is undo the bolt at the top of the crash bar just here. I'm using an impact driver, but if you want to, you can use a normal torque wrench. And uh, the torques for this is the same as the back, T40s. But once we've done that, we're gonna loosen the nut at the bottom. So we're gonna loosen this nut just here. Just so we can pivot, pivot the bar out like this. If you want to, you can remo remove the whole bar, but I never feel the need to. And then tighten it back up again. And then that bolt will fall out. So make sure you make a note of which bolt that is as well. And now I'm going to do the other side. Now we're going to start to remove this whole side panel with the silver part on there as well, all, all at once. So starting with this screw here. Now these are quite long screws holding this panel together. So if you look at that screw, this is one very long screw and it hasn't got a shoulder on there. So now the radiator cover. And if you look, the screw that I've taken out of this is the same length as the one that came out the front. Before we go any further, I do need to get the top of the tank off, the tank cover here. 
So I'm going to remove the front seat height adjuster. Make a note of the, the height that you had on there. This one says H, so this is in the high position. And what we do is push forwards on the plastic lug here, and then that pops out. And then just behind here, we've got two screws. Both of these are shoulderless T25 screws. Whilst you're here, swap out the, 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 the driver bit for a T30 and undo these just here. There are very few T30 bolts on the bike. As you can see, there they are. Oh, just dropped one. They've got a short shoulder on them, but they are a T30, so they've got a wider shaft thread as well. Open up the little compartment at the top and you've got two screws in here. And both of these are shoulderless short T25s. Oops. Okay, here's one of them. Butterfingers this evening. Shoulderless T25 screws. So behind the steering yoke, we have one screw here and another screw on the other side matching. And then there's another screw down right behind in the middle. So we're gonna take this one out first. And these two, one each side, are both shouldered T25s. Swap out the T25 for a T30 again. And straight down here. It's directly in the middle behind the steering yoke. very hard to get out you unscrew it and then you have to get both fingers down there to put it out and this screw is it's, it's one of a kind like I say it's a t30 and it's got a shoulder on it back to the t25 take the little winglets off now I don't like to take these out I just like to hold it all together because there's a lot going on here you've got the plastic winglet You've got a long screw, which is shoulderless. Uh, you've then got an, like an aluminium bush, and you've also got the rubber grommet as well. So as you take it off, just pull it up all at the same time, holding the back on like this, and sit that down somewhere safely. Or sit that down somewhere safe would be the correct grammar. And then the other side. And there's that one. So at this point, now is the time to take the lid off of the tank. So with this, we just pull up. It's just popped on around here. You don't need to take any screws off around the fuel cap unless you've got a tank bag holder on there. So we just come up and you start popping it up. All right, so now be, being very careful, because you don't want to snap anything. You've got a little bit there, which like a, a flap, which goes over this panel here and the same the other side and then it just lifts up like that. Now that's off, we've got a clear access to these two larger bolts, which are holding this bridge piece together for the seat height adjuster. So T40 inside here. And you can just leave them in there and we're gonna pull the whole thing up in one go. And you'll also have a small cable tie going around this fuse plug holder just here. I've already taken it off before I started the video, so apologies about that, but you need to snip that off. We're gonna take the fuse holder off and the little pro plug, which the customer hasn't got his pro plug, it's a brand new bike, it has, it's never been, it's, it has been ridden about 20 miles. This is why I thought this would be a perfect example to use because this is exactly how it's come off the line. So now they're free of it, we're going to start wiggling this. There we go. So you can just leave these bolts inside here if you want. Whilst we're at this area, we're gonna take off the battery cover. And the screw for this is a shouldered T25. So this screw just up here, this is a long shoulderless screw. So at this stage, we can now remove this panel here like the middle panel, because you've got the top panel, middle panel, and then you, I class this as the bottom panel just here. Before we slide this panel out, we're just gonna cover up the, the spotlight to prevent it from scratching the bike. 
to get this out because although all the screws have already been taken out it's kind of clipped in as well there's like lots of tongue grooves going on so you push down here and then you pull out these two tongues going into two slots on here that is now free to wiggle it a little bit and there we are off it pops and go and put that somewhere safe same on the other side just going to protect the spotlight just there unscrew the top screw here which is the same as the other side a long shoulderless screw and so we're going to pull down here oh i haven't taken these screws out of the side so these are identical to the other side all long screws right so we're going to pop that down there pull out the two tongues which i showed you on the other side there they are so that slides into this you have to be very careful because when you put this panel back on you have to think about getting these two tongues just here to slide into two little slots there and getting this kind of lip this 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 uh catch under the lip of the the front beak as well all at the same time whilst screwing the top part in there there we are so now we're going to take the front beak off so we've got one more screw just here and this is a short shouldered uh, shouldered t25 you don't get long shoulders on the on the r1250 and then the other side same again a short shouldered t25 to take this off what we need to do there's a, a tongue and groove on this front part here well, it's, it, look i just touched it all i did was squeeze it and it just came apart so you can see the groove just there just about there's a little groove like a letterbox this has already come free up here and if you look on the inside just there you can see the light's getting bad here now you can see that there it is like a shark's a shark's fin and that goes inside that groove there so when you put it back together again you have to make sure they go in the amount of times i've seen customers bikes come in where it's, it's probably not even them uh, i reckon the garages do it and because it's quite a thin piece of plastic it bends right over and it hasn't gone in that slot and it's bent over and uh, they're not even aware of it right and so with this one we haven't got a shark's fin but we've got two grommets under here there's no point in lifting the bike up to show you i'm better off showing you once it's actually off the bike but it has to come forward so this is already loose and the whole thing comes together so a little bit of wiggling there we are that's now off Straighten the handlebars out because it was getting in the way, one of the forks. And can you see these two prongs, which we can see on the screen? Yep. Yeah. These two prongs go through these little rubber grommets just here. Sometimes you take it off and the rubber grommets are, are still on the prongs. So you just want to pop them inside here. And when you put it back on again, just dab some grease or or or, or licky, licky finger and just just rub them over so it's nice and wet so it slips slips over nice and easy when you put it back together again so we're now going to work on this panel here the one that goes around the tank so to get this off we've got one screw here a screw there and a screw here and down here there is a small plastic rivet that has to come out this is a shoulderless t25 and it's a short one this also is a shoulderless T25. This also is a shoulderless T25. Okay, so now using one of these, this is a plastic rivet remover. There's various different types of rivet rem removers you can buy on Amazon, but this is the one that I find works well for me. I'm gonna come down here and so I've now pulled that right out. Now I can get a pair of pliers around it. There you are, a little plastic rivet. And then the other side just pops out.
Now all the screws and the rivets are free from this panel. All we do is we pop this off here, rubber grommet with another little plastic spike at the back. And then down here, it has to shift backwards. So there's the, there's the tiny little spike that goes through the grommet just there. And then this little piece here is the bit that had to go over this little wing on the tank just there. It's the same this side. Screws are identical this side as the other side. And now to remove the rivet. There's the rivet. And now we're going to pop this off the top, slide that back and remove that panel. Now, because we're going to remove the petrol tank, we're going to unplug the keyless ride for the petrol cap, which is this plug just here. Just cut the cable tie off. And there it is there. We now need to release all the cable ties holding this on. There's quite a few, but let's just unplug that. So the white bit stays on the bike. But let's start cutting these cable ties off and remembering to replace them when we put it all back together again. Another one under here. There's about four cable ties holding that on. So just here you've got um, where the keyless ride wire is attached to this connection just here. Also to this, this fuel line just there, but we can leave that. No, sorry, we need to take that off there. So that is completely free of the bike. And that is the only thing that's connected to now is the petrol tank. But whilst we're here, we're going to take off this hose pipe going to the tank just by pulling off. And on this side, we've got another hose pipe going here. So let's just pull that one off there. And the petrol tank is now free to be removed. So to do this, because I know it's all completely free to be taken off, we're going to put our fingers underneath this part here and one hand just there on top and we're going to pull it upwards and slightly backwards. We're not coming all the way off because it's still attached by a fuel line and two electric connections. So as we pull this backwards, you look down here. So the little white toggle, we're going to press that with our, push that down your thumb. It literally just pops off. That's the petrol off and then the electrical connections. You can get a screwdriver down there, but when you get really good at it, you just push it across the side a little bit and it just pops out. There we go, that one's now out. Back of there, and you can see there are the connections inside there. So these were the connections that we just took off the back of the petrol tank. Now it's like this, you might get a little drop of fuel on your fingers, but that's okay, it's all stopped. And now we just take the carpet off. And that reveals all of that. So, there we have it. This is a full strip down of how you get your R1250 GSA bike into this state. So you're now ready to start putting anything on there from K2 cameras, to a full Denali setup with everything you can possibly dream of. This is how you need to get your bike so you can do a proper install. I really hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, can you give me a thumbs up, please? If you haven't already, subscribe because I've got some great videos coming on. Right, so it's late Friday night. I've now got a date with the wife. See you in the next video, guys. Bye for now.